steak and ale pie is an all-time British favorite and a recipe I've been baking for years. But I want to take this pie a step further. So with that in mind, I headed off in search of the ultimate meaty flavor. My quest has brought me to this food show in Dundee and I arrived to the welcoming whiff of sizzling steak or buffalo steak to be precise. I'm here to discover whether buffalo could maximize the meaty taste of my pie. And the man who wants to convince me has a stall right here. It's farmer, Steve Mitchell. Steve. How are you doing? Nice to meet you, mate. How are you doing? You right. Now, I want a proper beef. Sure. OK. I've never actually cooked with buffalo before. And is this the sort of range you're looking at then? Because it looks exactly the same. It's probably one of the biggest advantages of the buffalo is that we're not trying to re-educate. We're selling all the same cuts as you would get with beef. It's actually a lot healthier, the equivalent of half the fat of beef. I can hear you almost saying immediately, oh, fat, that's flavour, but it's got the same amount of fat, but the, the consistency of the fat's very different. So a bit like your olive oil against your vegetable oil. You know, both are bad for you, but one much less bad. That's all very interesting, but the proof will be in the eating. So let the people decide, starting with me. Now, that's the buffalo. Lots of flavour. Texture's there, it's got a bite to it, but it's not chewy. It's just got more to it, it's more meat to it. Now, the cow. Nice flavour. A bit more chewier than the buffalo, actually. It's probably the cut. But then you lose the flavour in the cow quicker than you do in the buffalo. The buffalo flavour hangs round more. I'm sold. But what will other people make of the differences between the two meats? And will they have any beef about eating buffalo? Excuse me, would you like to try this? T take a toothpick. Time for the taste test. First, the buffalo. Oh, that is delicious, isn't it? That's lovely. It's really nice. OK, that's really very nice. It doesn't taste quite beefy, but it's nice. And now for the beef. Not a big lot of difference in them. So which was that one? That's buffalo, that's cow. Oh, no! The buffalo has a better texture. That's the buffalo, that's the cow. No way, that's gorgeous. It's just a bit more tender. It's got more flavour, there's more seasoning to it. I thought the buffalo was very tender and very, very tasty. And it's tender, it's more tender. Yeah, the buffalo was much nicer, it was uh, more flavoursome. So it's a thumbs up for Farmer Steve's buffalo meat. Well, from the people of Dundee, at least. But tasting the meat is one thing. I want to visit Steve's farm so I can see exactly where it comes from. One thing you're going to have to watch out for, they have rather large horns. You always have to keep your wits about you. I made that fatal mistake exactly this time last year and ended up spending four weeks in hospital as a consequence. Where? Oh, right where you really, really wouldn't want it. <laughs> and you can't get it stitched. Really? Really. I'm just... I think I'm busy, actually, uh, <laughs> Steve. Anyway, lovely meeting you, mate. You too. <laughs> City boy. <laughs> I'd say more cowboy myself. Staring fear in the face, I head to Clentry Farm near Kilcoddy, where Steve keeps a herd of 350 water buffalo, which he's grown from 100 animals which he brought over from Romania. We're obviously going to, uh, rather than walk in, we'll take the quad bikes. Yeah. Uh, There's a bit of a good enjoy one. Enjoy your ride there, mate. <laughs> oh, I'm getting the wrong one. <laughs> Let's go. Steve also farms Aberdeen Angus and Jacob Lamb, but it's his puddled up buffalo meat that I've got in mind for my steak and ale pie. Wow. These are much bigger than I thought they were going to be, to be yeah. honest. These are females. These are breeding cows, yeah. These are big animals living in a big landscape. I mean, now I've, I've got a feeling of how these animals live, and it's so hilly as well, and you've got such lush grass. We don't feed any concentrates at all, so it's, it's purely grass-based. It's all slow and easy with the buffalo. Nothing, nothing can be done in a hurry, right down to how you herd them to how you look after them. But the result is a really, really tasty product. And when you look at that view, you think, yeah, even I could live here. <laughs> But I'm not here to look at the scenery. I'm after buffalo meat for my pie, and Steve's going to make me earn it. So what have you got me doing? If you're feeling brave enough, we can maybe you can help me tag some calves. OK. Uh, they got horns. Well, not the calves yet. have little horns, but 
The horns you're going to have to watch out for is the mum's horns. They're quite big. Right. We're tagging their babies so they can be a little bit protective. Fantastic. That cheers <laughs> me up now, Ed. Lead the way. <laughs> oh, it's cool. <laughs> Steve wasn't joking. As soon as I arrived, there's a protective mother who seems a little too keen to meet me. The sanctuary of my kitchen suddenly feels a long way away. You can bake a scone, you can put a tag in the calves here, I promise. <laughs> so says the man who ended up in a hospital recently. So what we're going to do here is I've obviously got the cows on this side and the calves here. Yeah. We just let one cow round at a time, let it tell us which calf's ours. The calves are born in the fields unassisted, so there's no telling which calf belongs to which mother. To reunite them, one mother at a time is brought to the group to pick out her calf. Tell you what, Paul, if we get a boy, I'll name it after you. Oh, I think there's a couple. So we've decided it's a, the shiny calf, Paul, OK? Yeah, it is. All we've got to do now is separate mother from calf. And when I say we, I mean they, of course. Have you seen the size well of those horns? Well it's the same colour as my Labrador. <laughs> it'll hurt a little bit, but it'll be over very quickly, OK? I'm a natural at talking bull. With that one's mum having that lovely bit of silver hair in its forehead, what, do you think we should name this one after you? Uh, yeah, OK. Would you be happy for that, wouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Silver fox, you think? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have to look after this one now. You have to come back and visit. I'll, I'll, I'll be its godfather. Yes. Come on in, Silver Fox. Yeah. This could be a prime breeding bull. You never know. It could be the one. Well, it's certainly showing plenty of promise as a youngster. It's a good calf. Perfect. <laughs> Got a buffalo named after me. <laughs> Fattened up on West Fife's finest grazing, the puddled-up buffalo is sold at farmers' markets and traditional local butchers. Hi, Paul. Hello. How are you doing? Hello, nice Hello. to meet you. How are you doing, guys? Yes, of course. John the butcher stocks an array of buffalo, from upmarket rum steak and silver side to cheaper cuts like shin and top side. What do you think of the flavour difference between a cow and a buffalo? It's a slightly stronger flavour, mm. but not much difference. What cut do you think I should use for a steak and ale pie? A steak and ale pie, I would go for the, the side rump, what do you call the side rump up here? Nice texture, slight touch of gristle on it, which gives it a bit of flavour as well when it's cooked. Melt down lovely. That inside the pie, I think, will go extremely well. Probably not that much leaner, it's just the equivalent of half the fat. If you were looking at one of our Aberdeen Angus rumps there, it would be pretty similar. But if you look at the closely at that fat, it's very white in comparison to beef fat. It's more, more digestible by the body, so you're still crucially getting the same amount of fat to carry the flavour through, keep the meat moist and juicy to eat. OK, I'm bought and sold on the fact that I'm going to use buffalo. When it comes to the ale, I'll leave that to you. That's a taste test I'll enjoy. Absolutely. <laughs> I think I've chosen wisely. I mean, the buffalo that we saw today has been reared fantastically. And I can't believe I've got a buffalo named after me. Well, sort of me. <laughs> Joining me all the way from Puddled Up Prairie is Buffalo Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you How doing? How are we doing? I'm good. When I left you at the farm, I was so filled with testosterone driving that quad bike and sort of checking out all the buffaloes. I went for two breakfasts. <laughs> 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 I was arm wrestling quad, everybody. You went good in the cod, mate. Yeah, that no, was good fun. How is the uh, silver fox? He's doing well, yeah. No, no, I've got my bill for maintenance with me, so... Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't. No, he's a wee character, actually. <laughs> right, what I'm going to do is a steak and ale pie with that sort of flaky lid, I think, would work quite well, that butteriness that comes through. Now, running through the ingredients I've got here, obviously, you've brought down the ale. Do you drink this a lot? Well, I just believe that... When we're making a pie, there's you know no point putting a second-rate product in. You know, put in quality, we'll get out quality. So it's a very good beer, I think. Oh, it's got lots of depth of flavour, and it's got a strong pepperiness that sort of runs across the top as well, which would go really well with that steak. How many bottles did you bring down with you? <laughs> well, there's a couple less than uh, when I set off. <laughs> good lad. <laughs> <laughs> to start things off, warm your pan and then add some oil and butter. I've already coated the meat in flour, which will help it brown. Look at the way this meat's colouring. It's cooking a lot quicker than normal beef. What reason do you think that is? I'd certainly put that down to the fat. 
Right. I mean, the fact that it's a slightly little bit leaner as well. Lean cut because rump, don't yeah. forget, the fat would melt on a normal beef, and that would obviously coat it, and that would protect it almost. But this hasn't got that. The brown's beginning to happen. You may call that caramelization, aren't you? Caramelization, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> you get there, you get all fancy on me yeah, now, I, know, just I, do. I did pick up. You've been down here too long, you know. I'm going to take this off the heat now. It smells fantastic. All right, get up my way. Go and sit down. Do you want some beer? I have. Well, we 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 glass would be nice. I don't know if I've got enough left. <laughs> well, you've probably eaten drunk too much of it on the way back. Take the brown meat out of the pan. Then chop a carrot and add some shallots, mushroom sauce and a bit of brown sugar to help with caramelization. Then some tomato puree and a drop of ale before Steve drinks it all. I realise this is going to be recreated at Edinburgh Farmer's Market. We'll have the Paul Hollywood pies. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you come over here a sec, let me just cut this out a bit. All the flour that was coated in that steak and has gone down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, and it's see formed it. the little scrapings. I'm just releasing all them from the bottom because that's where the flavour is. You smell that? No, it's lovely. It's lovely, isn't it? That is going to be the heart of, that goes inside the, the pie. It's a shame you haven't got smell of vision It's absolutely delicious. To add moisture and flavour to your pie, pour in the rest of the ale and some beef stock and stir. Then, Add the buffalo back into the pan. Add a few sprigs of thyme, season with salt and pepper, and bring to the boil. Then reduce the heat and simmer gently for about an hour until the meat is beautifully tender. Right, so the next job for me, this is the pastry bit. I'm looking for it. Don't be letting me down. I'm not going to. I want a bit of horns on it. You manage that? Yes. In fact, I, yes. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. For the pastry. Get your bowl of flour and salt and add a squeeze of lemon juice. Add some lard and butter and break it up into crumbs using your fingers. This is what we call a flaky pastry. It's made like a puff pastry, but in a different way. A, I'm using lard, B, I'm putting clumps in rather than sheets of butter, which I'm going to show you how to do now. You do this all the time, Steve, I can tell. <laughs> then you add the water to it. Just turn it around, see how much flour is getting picked up by that liquid. You don't want this dough too, too wet. If I just bring that together, you end up with a dough like that. Now, because it's going to be a rough puff, you want a bit of strength. You don't want this thing to break too easily. Now, pop your dough in the fridge for half an hour to solidify the lard and the butter. And I'll show you how it incorporates in. So imagine this is the dough that you've rested. And all you do is you roll your pastry out, and then with the rest of the butter and the lard, you cover two thirds of it. You then fold it over and fold it again. That's what we call a turn. That then goes back in the fridge, and you want to leave it in there until it solidifies again. Now, it freezes probably better because it stings it and it takes about 15, 20 minutes. You then bring it out, roll it out again, and then fold it again. That's a second turn. Now, this dough's had four turns. I've just given it another turn. Right, I'll get that filling out of the fridge. Pour the filling into the pie dish. Add a line of pastry around the outside rim to help the lid stick. Lay your dough over the top and, using your hands, bind it to the rim. Trim off any excess with a knife and crimp the edges with your fingers. So that's your basic pie. On top of that, though, so we can roll up a piece of dough because it's buffalo, a couple of horns. That is our buffalo pie ready to go in the oven. Now, this is going to be baked at 200 degrees C for about 35 minutes. Now, over here, that is a proper buffalo and ale pie. Great quality meat. Can't wait to tuck in. And it's even decorated with horns. This hearty, wholesome pie will bring comfort and warmth to any mealtime. Steve, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer before we get a chance to eat it. Can't wait, can't wait. Looking forward to it.